Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Wednesday, February 24th, 2016. As of this morning, Sierra is still missing. Yeah, so I was doing the podcast this morning and realized I got the date wrong yesterday. You know, I've gotten to the point where I will open up my phone here and, and read the date off of it just to make sure. And I'm thinking, it's my birthday. I know the date. Dumbass. Uh, so I'm not doing the video today. I'm not doing the, the, the cockpit video, cockpit video, if you will. Um, it's just too dark. I, I checked it out, and it's just too dark. We've got heavy cloud cover here today. Winter is coming, literally. I mean, we've got a big storm coming in, depending upon who you listen to. Uh, anywhere from 3 to 12 inches, potentially. Um, the dividing line for where they think, at least for the last uh, weather update that I saw, the dividing line between kind of the, the 9 to 12 inches area and and the 6 and the you know, 3 to 6 inches area was... Right where, right, right where, right where our house is. They're still saying. So total snow accumulations around ten inches are expected north of the M fifty nine corridor. To the south, slightly lesser amounts of six to eight inches are expected. So we are right on M fifty nine here. So yeah, gosh, only knows. I mean, what we're gonna get. Uh, and looking at the radar, I mean, we're, we're in, if I look at the radar, we're in this big mass of, we were in a mass of blue, now we're in a mass of pink, which means freezing rain. And right now we've got nothing. It's not raining, it's not snowing, it is not in any way, shape or form wet, so who knows. But this is a big, a big storm that's supposed to go through today, especially tonight into tomorrow. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens tomorrow since I have class. Uh, If we have, uh, I got a test, but if we get pushed off, then we'll have to delay that a week. So we'll see what happens. See what happens there. So since I finished the three body problem, which I discussed yesterday, I read the second book in Matt Wallace's Sin Du Jour series. And I'm really enjoying it. It's it's published by Tor. If you are in publishing, you know, if you're a writer, you're paying attention to genre, science fiction, publishing stuff that was, you know, what, a year ago or so, the, Tor.com put out a call for sh- novellas and short novels. In fact, I submitted Borrowed Time to it. And Matt Wallace got picked up as part of that part of that process. And so that's what the Sin Is Your thing is. So these are novellas. So they're kind of on the short side. They run for two ninety nine, I think, on, uh, on Kindle. Which for a novella, I might you know, like them to have not knocked a, a buck off of that but but uh so i bought the first two i think i think the second one relatively recently came out I, I think it's relatively fresh if you will so the first one is called envy of angels sins is yours the name of the series and then the second one is called lust locked so i'll tell you a little bit about it so the main characters in this is a couple whose names are uh, Lena and Darren, I believe. But they are a couple of chefs that are working in New York City, or actually they're not working in New York City. They get... Something happened. I, I forget the details. But uh, something happened. So basically, they've been, they've been blacklisted. They aren't going to get any work... I, 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 yeah, I, I'm trying to remember if it was like something like 
the head chef there wanted to have a fling with Lena and she refused or, you know, they, they did some sort of whistleblowing thing. I forget. Because it's not all that germane to the plot other than the fact that they're, you know, they're unemployed and they're not likely to get employment. And out of the blue, they get a call from the chef that is somewhat legendary uh, as being this, you know, wild, avant-garde, out-of-the-box chef um, gets a call to come and be a part of his catering company, which is called Sin Du Jour. So they go, and, you know, they're thinking, okay, this is just another cooking job. They're being brought on part-time for this one big event that they're doing at Sin Du Jour. It might turn into something permanent. It might not. But but things things get uh, very strange very quickly. Darren accidentally lets something loose in the magic cabinet or magic pantry. Excuse me. There's a pantry that he's not supposed to go into, and he and he uh, unleashes some creature that's not supposed to be getting out. Um, uh, Lena ends up getting into a nice fight to establish dominance in the kitchen Kitchen with the lead sous chef. Uh, you know, so there's lots of interesting stuff going on. They're meant to be, they're meant to be you know, tongue-in-cheek comedies a bit. So, but they're doing, they're doing this, this event, they're, and they are... The, 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 the uh, folks for whom this, this uh, I think it's like a corporate dinner is supposed to be for uh, are demons real honest to god demons sorry for the pun it wasn't really was intended <laughs> um, and they have a special item that they want on the menu and I'm not going to totally spoil this. I mean, it comes out pretty early, but I'm just going to say it's a heavenly food item and leave it at that. And so then the rest of the book is, is how, they're, how they're figuring out how to deal with that. And then L- Lust Locked is you know, continuing the story with is a whole host of characters here. It's not just the two of them. They're, they're, they're kind of the main touch point, especially in the first book, because, you know, they don't really know what's going on. So it's easy to watch through their eyes because they're experiencing this for the first time, just like we are. Um, yeah. they're, thereby, you know, Matt doesn't have to do any, you know, well, you know, Bob, <laughs> as you know, Bob, you know, kind of, kind of BS. But the second one, they are doing a wedding uh, for goblins. And I, that's all I'm going to say about the second one, because I don't want to, uh, you know, some things might spoil the, some bits of the first one. Thus far, they seem to each be they're their own story. I mean, the characters continue, and, you know, there are ramifications from book one that extend into book two, but they each have their own definitive arc. Although he did leave, uh, he did leave some major uh, things unfinished in the second uh, book, Lust Locked. But I think he got a four book deal for this. So I, I know there's other other um, other uh, volumes coming. So it's not like, oh gosh, he did two of them and he left on a big cliffhanger and now we'll never know what happens. I don't think that's the case. Uh, I don't think that's the case at all. But they were interesting, uh, and they were fun. I mean, Lust Locked actually made me laugh out loud twice. Which, you know, and I don't tend to laugh at books very often. Uh, even even books that are funny. I can find something funny and not necessarily laugh out loud. You know, honestly, you know, I'm not talking, oh, I, I have an LOL moment in my head. You know, I, uh, but I did that twice in this book, which I consider good because... 
and there are other bits there that, that are funny. You know, those are just a couple that took me by surprise and and uh, made me made me really laugh. So I do enjoy them. They are rated R. There is language and adult situations going on, which isn't surprising from uh, you know Matt Wallace, whose Twitter handle is Matt Effin Wallace, literally. Uh, but if you're up for for a little R-rated entertainment and uh, kind of a it's kind of a science fiction slash fantasy. Maybe leaning a little bit more toward the fantasy, really, probably. But it is set in today's world, but you're interacting with these other fantastical creatures. And he does a really good job of kind of taking some accepted um, ideas about things, like for the goblins in book two. He totally turned those on their heads, you know. If you're thinking, you know, the Orakai from Lord of the Rings, which are even mentioned, no. <laughs> Most definitely not. You know, so there's a total... He totally um, redesigns, you know, what is a goblin. And that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. So, so yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I'm looking forward to book three. I will definitely get book three when, it, when it's out. I do not believe it's out yet, because I think book two just came out, like, last month or something along those lines. So I'll have to double check. But he talks about it on the uh, Digitiggers podcast with Merle Lafferty, so I'm pretty sure that I am correct on that. Anyway, I guess I'll let that be that for today. I'll let that be that, be that, be that, be that. I'm starting to sound like Porky Pig. That, 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 that's all, folks. Anyway, I think I'll be done for today since I'm obviously st- stumbling over my tongue. Uh, today's Wednesday, so I will be back tomorrow and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.